Imagine a world where marrying your cousin wasn't just normal, but seen as the best way to keep power in the family. Sounds strange, right? Yet, for centuries, powerful families believed this was their only choice. From the pharaohs of Egypt to the kings of Europe, human history is filled with stories of inbreeding that are as shocking as they are disturbing. Let's begin with the royals, the so-called blue bloods. For them, inbreeding was a strategy to keep their bloodlines pure and power within the family. The Habsburg dynasty, one of Europe's most powerful families, ruled vast territories, but their obsession with keeping the crown in the family led to generations of marriages between close relatives. The result, children born with severe deformities, disabilities, and mental illnesses. King Charles E of Spain, the last Habsburg ruler, was so severely affected by inbreeding that he was called the Bewitched. Charles could barely speak or chew and was infertile a direct outcome of a family tree that didn't branch out. And the Habsburgs were not alone. In ancient Egypt, the pharaohs believed they were gods on earth, and to keep their divine status, many rulers married their siblings. Cleopatra, one of the most famous queens of all time, was the product of generations of sibling marriages. While this kept the royal line pure, it also caused numerous genetic issues. Some pharaohs suffered from rare diseases and deformities, a hidden cost of their obsession with a pure bloodline. The Ptolemaic dynasty, which ruled Egypt after Alexander the Great, also practiced inbreeding to maintain power. Even in the Ottoman Empire, royal women often married within their family to secure alliances. So, what were the consequences of these choices? For many, they were disastrous. Generations of inbreeding resulted in severe deformities and illnesses. King Charles E wasn't the only one to suffer. Countless children were born with twisted spines, bleeding disorders, and cognitive disabilities, all due to a narrow genetic pool. The Habsburg jaw, a distinctive protruding jawline, appeared in so many members of the family that it became their defining feature. But the damage wasn't just physical. Mental health issues also plagued these families. Depression, anxiety, and even madness were common. King George Louis of England, for instance, suffered from a mysterious mental illness believed by some historians to be worsened by his family's inbreeding. Why did they do it? It was all about power, politics, and superstition. They thought that marrying within the family ensured loyalty and kept control over vast territories. But the real cost was far greater than they could imagine. But inbreeding wasn't just a royal affair. Far from the palaces, it occurred in isolated communities where tradition, superstition, and necessity shaped choices. In places like small villages or remote islands, the pool of potential partners was often very limited, and inbreeding was a means of survival. The Pitcan Islanders, descendants of the mutineers from the HMS Bounty, had little choice but to marry within their small group. Over generations, this led to genetic issues that still affect some descendants today. There's also the case of the Blue Fugates of Kentucky, who lived in an isolated part of Appalachia. This family became known for a rare genetic condition that turned their skin blue, a result of generations of close relatives marrying and passing down a recessive gene causing a blood disorder called methemoglobinemia. Their story is both fascinating and a warning of what happens when genetic diversity is lacking. And inbreeding isn't just a relic of the past. It still occurs today in places where tradition, culture, or lack of options lead people to marry close relatives. In some cultures, cousin marriages are common, not to keep the bloodline pure, but to keep property within the family or to preserve cultural or religious traditions. Modern genetics has given us a deeper understanding of the risks. Today, we know that inbreeding increases the likelihood of passing on genetic disorders, leading to severe physical and mental health issues. This is why genetic counseling is more common where cousin marriages happen as health professionals work to educate people about the risks. But the debate isn't just about science. It's also about human rights, culture, and ethics. Some argue that people should be free to marry whom they want, while others point to the risks to children. Laws vary widely. In some countries, cousin marriages are illegal, while in others, they're accepted. Why does this matter? Because the story of human inbreeding isn't just a dark chapter from the past, but a reminder of how complex human societies are. It shows how power, survival, and culture shape human behavior in surprising and often disturbing ways.